This is For the Governed, a podcast series brought to you by Athlon. Here are your hosts, Tim Markison and Ron Cates. Welcome to another episode of the Athlon's podcast. I'm Ron Cates. With me is Tim Markison, the CEO and founder of Athlon's. Uh, today's podcast is a little more serious, um, a, a little bit more somber. As you know from our previous episodes, Tim was sexually abused as a child. And Tim, I got to ask you, I'd like you to talk about how do you cope with that to survive that? Yeah, there's um, a, a lot of def- defense mechanisms I, I developed to during my childhood to survive that. You know, but one of the things I want to talk about before we actually get into that, you know, is I've I've made a point of sharing what happened to me without getting into the graphic details as openly and honestly as I can. And, you know, and I think the emotional scarring uh, of what happened to me as a, as a result of being uh, victimized as a child, um, you know, I think any, any person that's gone through trauma uh, can create some form of post-traumatic stress disorder, PSD. And, you know, I mean, if from a clinical standpoint, you know, that's, that's the medical definition of, of what I have. Um, so it, it relates to, you know, just a, a serious traumatic event that there are things in our lives and, 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 well, I'll keep it to me personally, you know, things in my life that will, will trigger, uh, a, an emotion and feelings that I had, um, when I was being traumatized. So yeah, it, it, this isn't actually in the blog, but, you know, just, um, just a few weeks ago, I had a procedure done on my my vein in my leg and it, it created a, a pain in my leg that you know, triggered a, a, a feeling and a memory of pain that I had in my body when I was, was um, being abused. So even a sensation can trigger a, a, recollection, a, a yeah. recall? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I've been calling a flashback. And, you know, and, you know flashbacks are you know, for me, it's, it's kind of like I'm in two places at the same time. I'm here, but I'm also in the past. Um, and it's, uh, and it, it brings back all of the, the feelings, uh, that were happening then. Um, and, and it, it's, um, you know, it, it, I've gotten a lot better at dealing with those when they first started happening. I mean, they would, they would wipe me out for weeks and weeks and weeks where wiping out, I mean, being extremely depressed, sad, uh, not able to sleep. And, you know, now, um, you know, it's depending on, you know, what it triggers, you know, it's a day, maybe a couple days where I'm feeling, you know, just out of sorts, depressed, saddened. Uh, but I can, I can rebound from that. But, you know, to survive my childhood, I really, really came up with, uh, by necessity, to uh, a series of, of survival skills or what I call my defenses. So, uh, um, you know, I, I, I learned how to disassociate. And I'll, I'll go through these in, in detail in a sec. But I learned how to disassociate. I learned how to internalize. I learned how to isolate. I learned how to, um, you know, distance myself and then I, I, I learned in certain situations to just to just take it. And, and none of these things are good, but they're necessary to survive. Right. You know, at the time they were they were essential. And, you know, and and, you know, the, I don't know how this works, whether it was divine intervention, um, whether I was fortunate. I don't know. But my defense mechanisms uh, uh saved a certain part of me there was always a certain part of me that wanted to be a good person to be a good father to be someone that mattered so no matter what was happening to me at the time when I was a child the series of defenses protected that part of me so that core essence of of who I wanted to be didn't get damaged do you think so as you know I also suffered abuse as a child, not right. nearly as heinous as what you went through, but um, 
a lot of the same coping techniques. For me, though, it was rebellion against my parents. Like, they're so bad that my way of, of rebelling, of giving them the finger, is by being the opposite. So in, in that case, it meant being a good person, being healthy, you know, um, not abusing drugs and alcohol, that sort of thing. Yeah. So for me, the rebellion against my parents led to some a great lifestyle. And also, it was a great coping mechanism because I was striking back at them by being a goody two-shoes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, the wanting to be a good father was my, I don't want to be like my parents. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with respect to the disassociation, it really, uh, um, I had two, two modes of disassociation. The, the first mode was... And, and this wasn't a conscious choice. My, my system just did this. But my mind essentially left my body. So I became, I became two entities. I, I had the physical body, and then the mind spirit was, was somewhere else. So all of the physical things that were done to my body when I was in this disassociated state seemed like it was happening to somebody else. And you were just a spectator, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Now, I, I, I did have the feelings associated with it but not the the first hand body experiences you know that that came you know later on in my therapy uh, which which really made you know accepting the reality of what happened to me really really challenging because it was like I was remembering somebody else's dreams or experiences not my own um, and then the, the second way I would disassociate is I, I would just forget um, but my my forgetting wasn't selected to just this incidence of abuse. It was this. So my, my childhood is, is, my memories of my childhood are very, very sporadic. And there's years and years that I just, I don't remember. You know, pretty much all of grade school until about eighth grade, I, I have very, very few memories. Um, so, you know, as, as an adult, you know, um, Anytime I get in a situation where I would feel fearful, there would be a conflict coming up, it was my natural response to disassociate. So my mind would become separate from my body. Um, but in that state, um, you know, I, I couldn't uh, articulate my position well. Um, yeah, and, and, and I would give in to things that, I, you know, weren't, weren't necessarily good for me because I was too afraid to stand up for myself. How do you yeah. battle that, though, when it's innate at yeah. this point? Yeah. The disassociation, how do you it, not do that? The first part for me was just recognizing that it happens. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's not just the disassociation. So um, to answer that question, I kind of really need to go through all the other defense mechanisms because they all kind of, sure. they're like pieces of offense. I got it. So with that, you know, what I learned early on uh, especially with respect to showing any kind of emotion, especially anger. So if I expressed anger in, in my family, the anger that my parents reflected back was magnitudes more than I was expressing. So I learned very early uh, in my childhood to just stuff my feelings. Don't, don't show anger um, you know, or you know, any, any really other kind of emotion because if I it, it just... It'd be a yeah. backfire. Some yeah. it'd backfire on you somehow. Yeah. So I just I just became a, a shell uh, emotionally, and then you know the other thing that's really that has really just come into you know perspective for me just just recently is you know I, I've known that I've you know basically I I hated myself you know um, ever since I can remember. Because, because you were told to, essentially. Yeah. You were told yeah. you were worthless. You were told you are bad. Yeah. So, uh, and, yeah, of course. And I internalized all that. And then, but I also internalized the fact that, you know, I, I wasn't perfect. And I, and I had this delusion, and whether it was told to me or something I created, but I had this delusion, if only I were perfect, you know, then they would love me and they wouldn't hurt me. Um, yeah. So a lot of this is now your fault. Yes. In your mind. Yeah. So I hated myself for not being perfect. So which set up, you know, the self-hate, but also trying to be a perfectionist. 
and there's there's very few things humans can do perfectly so when you know for me hating myself for not being perfect uh, but trying to strive for perfection just set me up in this virtual, this never ending loop of, well, I tried, I did really good, but it wasn't perfect. So I suck. Yeah. So, and that explains how you could be so successful, but still not get it. You know, it, you, yeah. yeah, it's not perfect. Right. It's really, really good. Yeah. But it ain't perfect. Right. So I'm, I'm no good now. Yeah. I'm, I've gotten a lot better with, with help over that. Um, you know, and, and you know, in that self-hate, self-blame uh, feeling, I think, was by far the worst damage that was done to me, because it it, it took me so low that um, you know there was many times in my life I didn't I didn't want to live anymore, and you know I was fortunate that I had I had help that could get me through those times. I had a, a, a wife and, and who loved me and, and my daughters who I didn't want to leave. So that, and with professional help, that got me through, through those times. In, in most of our lives, you know, there's a balance between, hey, there's things that we, we don't do well at, mm -hmm. but most of us can also find joy when we do something really, really well, when we have an accomplishment. You've had all these great accomplishments in your life, but to you, they were pretty much meaningless. Yes. Uh, you know, so it's we're just way unbalanced. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I have accomplished quite a bit. If I can look at my career objectively, you know, I, I have accomplished a lot as a, a patent attorney. But internally, I don't I don't feel that good about it because I still have I, I still haven't gotten to the next level, whatever that next level may be. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I feel OK about myself, but you know, I, I, and I also have a, uh, a very negative image about how I look, you know, even at almost 60 years old now, if I'm not, um, in really, really good shape, I, I struggle with, uh, liking myself of what I see in the mirror. Um, so, you know, the, to, that's why to me that self hate, self blame, the damage of being abused was, was the worst part because it just it's was for me and is for me so hard to um, to put in proper perspective and and to overcome it. Um, so, um, but then the next defense mechanism was um, isolating, and I would um, you know I, I remember as a child I would frequently run away. Uh, it never be for long, uh, you know, no more than a, a half a day or a day. Uh, I, I just, I'd realize that, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Um, so. But you're up in the tree, you can't get hurt. Yeah. So, um, so I'd eventually go home and, you know, I was never even really missed that I was gone for all day. Um, and then my other, other way I would um, isolate was I'd, I'd climb to the top of a tree and we had some. Uh, very very high pine trees in in our neighborhood and I'd just go sit in the top of those and at least there you know I was too high and too invisible for people to see so I felt I felt safe there you, uh, you created a physical safe place yeah yeah we talked about isolating yeah. and disappearing yeah and uh taking it yeah is the last one which yeah this is gonna be the most difficult to listen to I suspect so and maybe the most difficult to talk about, but I yeah. can tell you for everybody who's watching, we, this is invaluable to understand mm -hmm. how these things impact someone yeah. throughout their whole life. Yeah, you know, with respect to taking it, I realized that you know there were certain situations, you know, when, as a child, that what was going to happen to me was inevitable, and the more I fought it, the more I tried to run from it the more pain would be inflicted on me. So I learned to just take it. Now that, you know, worked as a child to at times mitigate the beatings. And a lot of it was the, the beatings that I remember. Um, so, you know, with, you know, my father would use a, his leather belt and, um, you know, I'd, I'd get bruises and cuts and, Every once in a while, he'd throw me, and I, he'd broken my bones a few times. 
Yeah. Right. So, so in your horrible situation yeah. as a child, that was effective in a perverse way. Yeah. But as an adult, yeah. So that doesn't work anymore. No, or it's so, not healthy. Yeah. So, again, getting into a situation where you know I would have to stand up for myself, I, I would shrink. And, you know, somebody got angry with me, well, that would trigger the disassociation plus, well, you know, stand there and take it. Um, so that, that really created, you know, just challenges early in my marriage um, that my wife and I had to work through, um, and, as well as in my professional career. Yeah, and, you know, it, and, um, you know, that was actually part of the reason uh, I wanted to become a lawyer is you know, people don't mess with lawyers because they can mess back. Well, <laughs> that, that really didn't work for me. I got my law degree and it was still, you know, get into a confrontational situation and uh, disassociate and, and take it. So, I, um, you know, so to so start to, you know, mitigate the effects of my defenses, um, you know, and then you know, part of part of the challenge too was when a situation as an adult would trigger these um, experiences or defense mechanisms. You know, I learned all those defense mechanisms as a child. So, when something in my adult life would trigger one of these childlike defenses, it would turn me back into that child dealing with that offense or or that that situation. Um, so instead of as an adult, I was, you're dealing with it as a, was, as a young child. Right. As knee-jerk reaction, it just reverted me to a child. Um, so a lot of my uh, therapy work was, was recognizing how these defenses get triggered and, and recognizing that they were starting to take effect and then trying to pull myself back to becoming an adult. And, yeah, and it... it it, it takes a lot of work and a lot of energy, um, but it, you know, it has, it has worked. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm now to the point where, especially when I'm representing a client, um, I've, got, I've got no problem getting in a confrontation and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other side to defend or my client's position and get what, what they deserve out of whatever situation. But, but that's in. very different than you personally. Yes. Now, for me personally, I've gotten a lot better at it, but not near as um, good at it when I'm representing somebody else. Do you, I mean, this probably is a, a dumb question, but conflict is normal among humans, especially in business, yeah. in, in a relationship like a marriage. It's just natural there's going to be some conflict. Do you completely avoid that, or do you find you're still dropping back to some of these coping mechanisms, or is there a, ba a better balance now? Certainly earlier in my adult life, I, I tried to avoid them. You know, and it, it really depends on what the, the conflict is. If it's a personal conflict, so somebody's trying to be mean, it makes sense to avoid that. But if it's in a, in a, in a business setting, um, you know, and in in recognizing, especially in a business setting, that, that the other person is just adamant about their position and it's not about trying to beat me up or, or hurt me or anything, um, you know, then, you know, recognizing that, then I can stay strong in myself and, and deal with that confrontation in a professional and adult manner. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, through a lot of counseling, a, a lot of dealing with conflict is, you know, making sure that listening, but also, uh, you know, avoiding using phrases or name calling or anything that would inflame the situation. So, you know, working through it as a professional adult. So you and I often have conflict at work. I don't, I don't even think we view it that way, yep. but I have a position on something. You have a different mm -hmm. position. But I've never felt like it was, you know, um, wasn't personal or angry. It's like, yeah. here's what I think. You say, here's what you think. In between us, mm -hmm. we just decide which route to take. Right. right. So uh, that's very healthy to the point where it doesn't really seem like anything anyone would ever have to avoid because mm -hmm. it's, I think it's handled very well. Yeah. So I think you've gotten really good at this. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, and I will say part of that is because you do listen mm -hmm. and you're not, uh, you're, you're definitely, um, 
a strong advocate for your point, but you're not so resolute that you won't listen to other options. Yeah. Well, in, in, you know, I mean, we've worked together now almost three years and yeah, we've, we've had disagreements, but you also approach it in that same professional adult manner. It's like, no, this is my view on things. You know, we keep things cordial, you know, and we, we stay on topic, um, which is completely different than a situation where somebody, somebody comes in and it's like, damn it, this is my way. And if you don't listen, you're an idiot and blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, that, that's, but we see that all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it happens all the time in business. Um, and, in, you know, in those situations for me in the past, I used to just cower from those situations. And I, I don't think anybody really relishes of course not. having to deal with those type of people. So what I do when I know I'm going to have a meeting with somebody like that, 15 minutes before that meeting, I'll sit in silence and, and, and meditate about having positive energy and being strong in myself and, and knowing that I know my position and, so when I go into that meeting, I'm positive, but I'm authoritative, and um, I'm ready to to um, confront this overwhelming negative energy. And majority of the time, I can calm that situation down, and and they end up seeing, you know, what I was bringing to the table, and that discussion was really beneficial, and and we usually work it out in a favorable manner. <laughs>